Hey there, Adrian Rose Brock here from PyMidSearch.com, and we're going to start getting into object detection. So this series of guides is really meant to serve as an intro to the concept of object detection. We're going to start off on how you can use basic contour processing to identify shapes and images, and we'll move on to techniques called template matching. Uh, template matching is a, probably one of the most fundamental easy forms of object detection, and we'll learn how to do that with basic images, we'll learn how to do it with uh, multi multiple templates, and we'll also learn how to do that across multiple scales. From there, we're going to shift more into your pre-trained object detectors. These are, um, if you've ever seen like face detection methods before, face recognition, object detection methods, uh, such as uh, uh, detecting people in a video stream or other objects, this is where that kind of that magic, oh, wow, type of stuff happens in computer vision. The stuff that really catches your eye and makes you think, wow, like this is actually possible with computer vision and deep learning. So we'll be using pre-trained object detectors here. So again, that includes face detectors, includes object detectors, uh, specifically deep learning based ones that can detect people, cars, vehicles, uh, buses, and just everyday household objects in both images and real time video streams. Later in this series of courses, that's when we're going to start learning how to train our own custom object detectors on your own data sets. That's a much more advanced technique. So I want to lay the groundwork now. We're going to understand how these object detectors work, and we're specifically going to work with pre-trained ones. That'll get you experience working with them. It'll show you what's possible. And in some cases, depending on what type of project you're working on, those pre-trained object detectors will be more than enough. Uh, a great example is building a neighborhood speed monitoring system. So if you've ever lived in a densely populated neighborhood before, you of course have seen drivers uh, being reckless and speeding through the neighborhood and potentially putting people, kids, and, and pets at harm. And a common project I get asked is, how can we detect the speed of a driver using just cameras? Of course, you can use other sensors. There's radar and LIDAR sensors, but if you just had a camera, is it possible to detect the speed of a moving vehicle? The answer is yes, you certainly can. And using deep learning based object detectors, you can detect the presence of a car in an image. And then if you have your camera calibrated, you can therefore determine or estimate the speed of when a driver hits a, a, this point here and this point there. You can compute the difference, use that information to help derive the speed of the moving vehicle. That's all possible using pre-trained object detectors. And that's why I like to cover this first. You'll It'll open your mind, it'll open your imagination to what you can build. But today, it really starts with contour-based processing. This is arguably the easiest, most simple form of object and shape detection. And to show you what we're going to do here, I have this image of example shapes. So we have squares, we have rectangles, triangles, circles, pentagons. And our goal is to not only locate each of the shapes in this image, but also identify what each of the shapes are. For example, this is a rectangle and this one up here is a pentagon. We want to be able to programmatically do that with computer vision and OpenCV. So looking at our project directory structure, you've already seen the example image we're working with. Then we have this detect shapes driver script. This is what actually enables us to perform shape detection. And then over here in the PyM search module, we have this shape detector.py file. This file actually takes the contour representing a specific object and then identifies what the shape is using contour approximation. If you haven't yet learned about contour approximation, go back to the intro OpenCV courses, go through them, learn about contours first, and then come back here and continue on. So with that said, let's open up PyCharm. I got the project directory structure pulled up here and let's start with the shape detector implementation. This is a really simple Python class, which we defined here. It has an empty constructor. And then we have this detect method, which accepts a single parameter C. This is the contour of the shape. So again, what we're gonna end up doing is performing a bit of, um, as you'll see, a bit of thresholding here. And this thresholding process is going to give us each of these shapes. Now we're gonna compute the contours of each of these shapes. And for each contour, we need to determine the shape. So that's what this C variable here is. So we initialize our shape as being unidentified because we're not sure what it is. And then we compute the perimeter of the contour 
and then approximate it, just like we've done in our contour approximation lessons. Now, once we have our contour approximated, all we have to do is check the number of vertices in that approximated contour. If there are three vertices, then we know we have a triangle. If there are four vertices, then we have either a square or a rectangle. And to determine whether we have a square or a rectangle, all we have to do is compute the aspect ratio. So we compute the bounding box of the approximated contour, and specifically we're interested in the width and height but mainly the ratio of the width to the height. This is called your aspect ratio. So let's take a second and think about what this value is computing. If this value is one or close to one, then that means both the width and the height are identical or near identical. And if the width and height are identical, that implies that all sides are equal and that we have a square. Otherwise, if they are differ in some manner, then we have a rectangle. And that's what this code is doing. So if our aspect ratio, ratio is at least 0.95 and then less than 1.05, uh, then we know we have a square. Otherwise, we mark it as a rectangle. We give this aspect ratio a little bit of tolerance here because if we change the viewpoint angle slightly, maybe our camera wasn't pointed uh, slight, just perfectly right down on top of the example image. Maybe there's a slight variation in the square itself. So you include a tiny bit of variation on either end of this aspect ratio check. That's just a, just a little bit of tolerance that I suggest you incorporate into your own, own projects as well. So continuing down this series of if-else statements, if we have five vertices, then we have a pentagon, and otherwise we'll just assume that we have a circle. And the return statement here just returns the name of the shape to the calling function. So let's see how we can use this class for shape detection. You'll notice we're importing that shape detector class that we just implemented. Arg parse for command line arguments, IM utils for extracting the contours from, from our image here and for uh, resizing the image. And we have CV2. This is our OpenCV bindings. So we start off by parsing our command line arguments. The only argument we need is image, which is the path to this shapes and colors, that PNG file on disk. We load this image from disk, resize it to have a width of 300 pixels, and then compute the ratio of the original height to the new height. We're going to use this ratio later, and specifically right in here when we're drawing, drawing our contours. So the reason we're resizing this image is to reduce, it's essentially a noise reduction. We want to focus just on the shapes themselves, not on any of the any of the background that might be going on here. And plus, the less data you have, the faster your algorithm is going to run. However, when we draw the results, we want to draw them on the original higher resolution image, not this smaller resized image. Therefore, we compute the ratio so that later when we're ready to draw the contours, we just multiply the, con the XY coordinates of those contours by that ratio, and it brings them from the smaller image scale to the original image scale. Continuing on with our pre-processing, convert the image to grayscale, we're gonna blur it, and then we're gonna threshold the blurred image. And I'm actually gonna insert a, uh, a little debugging call in here so you can see what our threshold thresholded image looks like. So once we have this thresholded image, we're going to compute the contours, extract them, and then initialize our shape detector class which we implement, implemented over here. So for each contour, we're going to assume we're examining one of the shapes in this image. And we're gonna compute the center XY coordinates, the centroid of, of the contour. And then we're gonna use those, and then we're gonna pass in the shape, or pass in the contour into our shape detector, which is going to give us the actual name of the shape. Now keep in mind what I told you, this, this contour is computed relative to the resized image, but we want to draw the contour on the original higher resolution image. So to do that, keep in mind a contour is just a set of X, Y coordinates annotating where each point along the contour is. So to convert the contour from a lower resolution image to a higher resolution image, we take each of the X, Y coordinates, convert it to a floating point data type, multiply it by the ratio, and then convert it back into an integer. From there, your contour has been scaled up from the lower, lower resolution image to the higher resolution image, and then you could draw, you can draw the contour on the, on the higher resolution image. 
Now here's where we use those center x, y uh, coordinates that we just computed. Here we're going to draw the name of the shape that we're examining. And finally, we'll show the output image. So I'm gonna grab the usage here, pop open to my terminal, execute the script. So here's this thresholded image that I was telling you about. Notice that this is the original higher input resolution image. Here's the 300, uh, 300 pixel input image, has a width of 300 pixels due to this line right here. And as you can see, we've segmented each of the shapes from the input image. Now let's loop over each of these shapes one by one and examine what they are. So this is identified as a pentagon because the approximated contour has five points. This is a rectangle because the approximated contour has four points. However, this test here, the aspect ratio was either less than 9.5 or greater than 1.05, causing the output shape name to be a rectangle. Triangle here, approximated contour has three vertices, which is a triangle, another rectangle, triangle. This circle here, this fell through all of the if else statements down to the bottom, resulting in the shape being a circle. And we can continue on just uh, looping over the results. And as you can see, for each, each shape, we've been able to correctly identify it just using contour approximation. So this approach works really, really well and in two situations. The first is if you have this top-down bird's eye view of whatever you're taking an image of. So you want, and more importantly, you wanna be able to segment the foreground objects from the background objects. There must be enough contrast between the foreground and the background. If you can do that, you might be able to apply contour processing as we've done here. The other situation is, is you want these objects here to be, when you're looking down at that object, you want it to appear flat. If you have a lot of uh, three-dimensional objects that you're working with that there's a, it, you can really tell that there's a significant amount of uh, shadowing and contrast causing that object to kind of bulge upward and really distort this kind of 2D view that we have here, then contour processing likely isn't going to be enough for your, for your shape and object detection. But one way you will see this working well is in uh, manufacturing situations where you have this conveyor belt going going and just shooting items you know down the line and you can have a camera pointed down at that conveyor uh, conveyor belt and if your objects are flat enough you can just ensure that there's enough contrast between the belt those objects and then from there you just apply thresholding or edge detection uh, and then apply contour detection loop over those contours and then you might be able to simply identify whatever shape or product or object on that conveyor belt using just contour detection. I always tell readers when, when you encounter a computer vision or an image processing problem for the first time, don't immediately reach for like the, the jackhammer in your tool belt. Don't pull out the heavy guns like your complex machine learning or deep learning algorithms. Instead, see if there's a simple solution. See if you can leverage just basic computer vision and image processing techniques. Because in some cases, you can get away with these techniques and save hours, days, or even weeks of development time. That is a huge, huge win. And it's only possible if you understand these basics. So I hope that helps. I hope that sh helps show you what you can actually do with contour approximation and how it can help with shape and object detection. In our next series, we're going to continue on going on with template matching. We'll look at hard cascades. We'll look at deep learning based object detectors. But take the time now to download the code, run the notebook associated with it, and familiarize yourself with shape detection. I'll see you next time.